A very warm welcome to all our listeners around the world. You're welcome to the Tony Tukumbo Fernandez Show, the show that promotes the true life and success stories of African and Caribbean achievers around the world. So if there's a product or initiative you wish to share, feel free to give us a call. The number is 788 280 That number once again is 788 280 And visit our website at www.tonyfernandez.co.uk. It's all about promoting the true life stories of Africans and Caribbeans around the world. And we've been doing that now for very many years. And we celebrate this month, Black History Month, with some amazing guests lined up this month and some amazing guests lined up this year. But today we're here in Bradford, the UK City of Culture, 2025. When we're speaking now today to a pioneer, a historian, a man that has been creating legacies in Bradford for many years and for black people in Bradford for very many years as well. He's also the founder of Collective Impact. He is also behind Black Lives Matter in Bradford. He has so many initiatives, both community and grassroots. So for the benefit of all our listeners outside the world today, it's a pleasure to have on here, uh, Mr. Jerry Crawford. Uh, welcome to the Tony Tukumbo Fernandez Show. Um, how are you feeling today? Well, good morning, Tony. Thank you very much for that introduction there. Uh, I'm feeling fine, thank you very much. And yourself? I'm feeling fine. It's Black History Month. Uh, the feeling is so powerful and profound to promote our true stories around the world. And I'm still having reflections back to the big Wind Rush Festival uh, you guys organized a few months ago in Bradford, which pulled over 7,000 people. And we continue to promote people's stories. But for the benefit of all our listeners around the world today, listening in from outside Bradford, who don't know much about Jerry Crawford, can you tell us a bit about yourself, your background, and the things you're most passionate about in life? Yes, Tony. Uh, my name is Jerry Crawford. I'm originally from the island called St. Kitts and Nevis. I came to this country, the UK, in 1962. I lived in Manchester in the early years of my life. And then from there, I've been in Bradford ever since. Uh, Bradford is a place to me what is my, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a, I'm a Bradfordian. I'm here to uh, serve my community, but especially my uh, black community, because obviously we've been through so much uh, turmoil and disruption and all the other things over these centuries. So my main aim is for us as black people to get our equal share of what's happening in this world today. I know it's a slow thing, but I believe we're going in the right direction. Now, you hit on something so profound there, because... Um... We want to know as well, what your experiences are like? What were your experiences like growing up as a black person in Bradford? And also what are the experiences of a lot of black people in Bradford and the challenges as well? Right. So growing up in Bradford as a, a black person, 
<laughs> as a youngster, uh, we went through all these, how can I put it, we went through all this racism, discrimination and things like that. But as a youngster, I, I didn't really understand. So I just believed, you know, that was the way of life. You know, I used to watch TV. I used to see all these negative things about black people. But again, at the time, I didn't realise what was going on. But as I got into my into my teens now, and, you know, my mother's talking to me and I'm, I'm listening to what people are saying now, I'm realising now that us as black people are going through a rough patch. You know, I used to get called a uh, wog. I never, knew, I never knew what a wog was. I used to go home and say to my mum, what is a wog? I didn't know. And all these things I learned. So, yeah, we went through uh, a lot of things. And like I said, because we didn't know, we kind of took it on board. But now I do know I am fighting and fighting and fighting to make sure that we get what we deserve. Now, you're fighting and fighting to get what we deserve. And we continue to make a mark in the legacies we do in today and in the future. What do you think black people should be doing at the moment uh, to um, to promote our narrative, our stories, and also to fight for our campaigns in Bradford or other communities around the country? Right, okay. I can only speak for myself, but I believe we have to continue what we're doing now because at the moment, it seems things have kind of geared up a little bit now. People are listening to uh, what we have to say now at one time they never used to these are dismissed us straight away but now they have to listen so i think that has changed and i believe us as black people and our other allies our white our red our pink allies who want the same for us we have to how can i put it it's like the, sl the slogan says what's out for the black history month now it's time for change it's action not words so now i want to see action I want to play action. I want action to be done. So that's what I'm promoting now. Action, not change. So, I mean, for instance, if anything was happening, anybody was getting discriminated in any kind of way and someone's walking past, now don't walk past anymore. Actions, in some shape or form, we know it's dangerous where you could put yourself or your life at risk. But if we don't get any action, nothing's going to happen, I believe. Fantastic. And we're going to be coming to that in a bit because we're also going to be talking about your event taking place on the 21st this month. But we, before we go into that, let's talk a bit about collective impacts. Uh, for the benefit of all our listeners outside Bradford, what is collective impacts all about? Okay, so collective impact is a voluntary community organization and we have a few volunteers who have joined with us now. And what we do, we go out into the community and it's it's open, it's not just for black people, it's for anybody. And we're here to help as much as we can. So, we, you know, we have links with the uh, local authorities, we have links with schools. So if there's a problem in any shape or form in the community and we can help out anywhere, we can use our little platform to raise the awareness of what's going on, then that's what we do. And you know what you're doing with Collective Impact now is uh, promoting community cohesion and understanding amongst communities, which is right. so important for diversity. How important do you feel that is? It's very important because, I mean, if the diversity set of people don't get any education or any learning, then where are we going to go? And I believe that's for us as well as black people. We have to learn as well. We have to educate ourselves as well. So, I mean, if we all do that together, then we will get somewhere. I know we're not going to eradicate it, but for me, it's kind of doing it in the community with the people I live in, live with. Let's also talk about Bradford Community West Indian Society or Centre. Checkpoint. What does Checkpoint represent to the lives of people in Bradford, historically? Well, Checkpoint is uh, one of the oldest black organizations, if I remember rightly. And Checkpoint's been there a long time. What Checkpoint was doing, they run many programs of different things. For instance, they had after school care, they had African workshops, they had history lessons, they had cooking lessons, they had social events. You know, people could hire up the place for weddings and birthdays, etc. 
So Checkpoint was a hub and it was a main place for us as black people where we had somewhere to go, where we knew it was ours. But as the years went by, uh, things kind of happened. I don't know if it's lack of funding or whatever. So it, it kind of went quiet for a few years. But there's a new committee down there now and they've got a lot of fire in them. So they are now starting again and rebuilding Checkpoint. So at the moment now, there's a, there's a few things going on. You know, they've got uh, events, they've got uh, young people coming down there and putting their events on. They've done some sewing classes, cooking and that. So they're slowly getting back to where they should be. Now you have a big event taking place uh, this month, Friday the 21st of October from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. at the Storm Studio. Uh, it's a big black history event all day. Can you tell all our listeners in Bradford and also those outside Bradford a bit more about that event and what we can expect on that day? Okay, so again, I mentioned the theme, Time for Change, Action, Not Words. So that is the theme this year. So this is going to be our, our third event, what we run now on a yearly basis. And what it is, what we are doing is championing and honouring the people from Bradford. We know Black History Month is a big thing, but we're just con you know, concentrating on our own at the moment. So we are bigging up and giving, like I said, homage to those people in Bradford, you know, past and present, who have kind of inspired others or have done things of recognition. So this year we are going to uh, honour the uh, bus drivers and the nurses from Bradford, and them are the ones we're going to be honouring this year. So that's the theme this year. What comes with that, we, it's like you said, it's a full day, three, three until 11. And what's going to go on is we're going to have uh, speakers. We're going to have uh, storytelling going on. We've got local talent coming to perform. We have a uh, cuisine of uh, the Caribbean and African as well. We're going to have stalls. So the whole day is a day of coming down and educating yourself, getting some entertainment, also getting some food and making new friends. And again, for people to learn about us as black people. Now, you, you just highlighted on something so profound to me now about recognizing uh, the importance of nurses and bus drivers. So you are really hitting hard on grassroots communities where it really matters. And that's quite impressive. How important do you think it is because you are more of a community social activist. How important is it to engage the community at grassroots level? Well, I think it's very important. Reason being, a lot of these people from the past, as well as present, have done so much that a lot of us, are, sort of say the younger generation, don't realise what input their fathers, their grandfathers, their uncles, their whoever, have put into Bradford to make Bradford the way it is. So, you know, I believe it's very important also as well, where, you know, we're involving the community as well. So they feel part of it. So they're, you know, they're giving their input. You know, some of them, for instance, we need pictures or information from their family who worked on the buses or was a nurse and they are contributing. So it's a, it's a thing where we're all together, learning together and helping together. Also, can you just give us a taster of the speakers you have lined up on the day and also the performing artists you have lined up on the day and possibly the DJs and also maybe the media partners involved? Right. OK, so we have uh, we have a young man from Bradford. He's, he's called, uh, goes by the name of T.T. I believe his real name is Asher Titre. And he performed at the uh, St. Kitts and Nevis Independence Day last week. And the performance was so good that I asked him if he would perform down for us. And he said, yes. We've got uh, Marva Bell, who is a poet and a storyteller. So she's going to be down there to give us that. We've got a band called Love Generation. They're from Bradford as well. A very exciting and very lively band. So I want everybody to come down and check them out. They're going to be performing as well. We have some performances coming from the the uh, users from some studios some studios is, a, is a, a studio where they work and help uh lot 
well, the majority of the people there are, what's that word? Um, not disabled, learning difficulties. So, you know, they're doing a great job as well. So they, their users will be helping. And I remember last year, many of them didn't even know what Black History Month was. And now they know. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a good thing. Now, for the benefit of uh, people in Bradford who want to attend the event on the day, how can they reach you to attend the event? That's the first thing. And secondly, because they may not know where Storm Studio is, can you tell us where that is and everything? Right, okay. So uh, if you want to come to this event or you want any more information, my email address is jerry, with a J, Crawford, 358 at gmail.com. You can also contact me on Facebook, Jerry Red Dread Crawford, or you can go on the Collective Impact Black Lives Matter page and you can leave a message there and that's where all the information is. Okay, that's beautiful. And we expect to see a full, colorful day continue to promote the legacies of Black History Month in Bradford. I mean, growing up in Bradford now, when you look back to people like role models who inspired you in Bradford, I'm talking about black people now, what names come to mind you want to recognize as people who really inspired black people in Bradford? And we're going back to the past now. And possibly right, so uh, that is a, a big one, really. And I, I don't think I can answer that question because there's that many names and I, I wouldn't like to leave any names out. But there are many, many black people who've inspired me, people like yourself. You know, we've not known each other for too long, but the short time I've known you, you've inspired me so much, you know, I'm just raring to go. So that's my answer. <laughs> okay. On a very final note, what message do you have for all our listeners around the world today, listening outside Bradford? But most importantly, what message do you have for all black people in Bradford as part of Black History Month? Well, all I can say, and they probably know this, is be proud of who you are, be proud of where you come from, and let's get forward. And we can do that by working together, listening to each other, and also, I suppose, listening to others as well. That's fantastic. Um, I think it was um, Peter Touch that once said that no matter where you come from, as long as you're an African, you are a black man. Correct. How important is it for Africans and Caribbeans to recognize in this day and age that they are one people? It's very, very, very important to know that. Again, as you probably know, over the centuries we've been put here, we've been put there, they're trying all kinds of things to keep us separated, but it's not going to happen because we all want to know where we're coming from and we all want to know where we're going. We're constantly proud of your legacy and we expect so many more legacies from you to come today and in the future and keep up the amazing work. Thank you very much, Mr. Tony. Thank you, sir. Thank you.